there's a bear right over here eating some salmon out of this great gray here. So this bear has been active in this area here for a couple weeks and you can tell because when you walk the banks of the river here, you can see it's just littered with all these carcasses of the chum salmon that it's been eating, most of which have their heads bitten off. And right here we've got five different carcasses right at the base of this western cedar, which denotes a really important connection because cedars and all conifer trees really, uh, the main limiting growth factor is lack of nitrogen, which is used to create chlorophyll, which they then use to photosynthesize, creating oxygen, sugars from CO2 and sunlight, which they use to grow big and strong. But nitrogen is pretty tough to come by in, use, in usable form in terrestrial environments like this. And it's often sourced from decomposing leaf litter from deciduous plants and trees that's broken down by fungi and insects and distributed with the help of various mycorrhizal fungi. But here, in riparian areas of streams that support salmon, there are unusually high levels of nitrogen-15 and carbon-13, which are rare, stable isotopes primarily found in the oceans. It turns out, that these salmon, after spending their adult lives in the ocean, return up these rivers to spawn and die. And when they do, their carcasses are carried off from the woods by bears or other predators or scavengers, you know, like birds and stuff, that take them even deeper. And when they decompose there or find their way back to the forest floor through the scat of whatever's eaten it, they leave those rare isotopes of nitrogen and carbon in the soil, redistributing those important nutrients all throughout the forest so that trees like this cedar here can grow big, strong, and healthy. Studies of these trees show higher than usual concentrations, these rare oceanic derived nutrients deep in their heart with suggesting a relationship between these fish and forests that goes back thousands of years. So without these salmon, the iconic forest of Cascadia wouldn't exist as they do today. Pretty dang neat.